Hey everybody. This video is going to be about um, reducing terms uh, in everyday language syllogisms, um, getting them into categorical form, and then uh, testing for validity. So uh, this is section 5.4. Uh, but so here are the steps for reducing terms in everyday language arguments. Uh, first is you want to symbolize the over, overall argument. Uh, and once you've symbolized it, uh, place the premises in the proper order. Remember that the major term is the one that occurs in the first premise and the minor term is the one in the second. And then step three, we're going to use conversion, converse, obverse, and contraposition, contrapositive, to ensure that the major, minor, and middle terms all match each other. It doesn't matter if they're C, like for example, S, or non-S, but they can't be the opposite. So if one term is non-S and the other is S, then we would need to use uh, either contrapositive or obverse, depending on you know, which one works, to get them both to be non-S or both to be S. So we can't have more than three terms. All right, so um, we are going to start then with number two here. Some people who do not regret their crimes are convicted murderers. Some people who do not regret their crimes are convicted murderers. Um, so some uh, non-P, we can call them. Some people who do not regret their crimes uh, actually, let's call them um, non-R. Some non-regretters are convicted murderers. So let's call those people, some non-R are C, convicted murderers. So, conclusion indicator, some convicted murderers are people not susceptible of being reformed. So remember what follows the conclusion indicator is the conclusion. So let's go down a little bit. Some convicted murderers, some C, are insusceptible or we can call them are non-susceptible people. They're non-susceptible to feeling guilt. All right, and then that means that um, since, premise indicator, all people susceptible of being reformed are people who regret. So all people susceptible are people who regret. All right, okay. So yeah, the first step is to symbolize the argument. The next thing we wanna do is we want to get the premises in the proper order. So here, um, non-S is our predicate term. So our S, whatever premise has the S in it, needs to be our major term. So all S are R should be the first premise. And uh, the second premise then will be some non, some people who are not non-R, R, C. All right, so you can see here we have one term, two, three, four, five different terms. So we need to get it so there's either two S's or two non-S's, and we need to make sure that the R's here are either two R's or two non-R's. And then C matches C, so we don't wanna change anything going on with C if possible. Okay, so what do we do? Well, the third step is to use the obverse, the converse, or the contrapositive to ensure that the, that the terms match each other. So what can we do to make, um, non-SS or S to non-S, uh, while also making R to non-R using those methods? And if you said use the contrapositive, you're right. So remember in the contrapositive, with an A-form statement, 
uh, is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. You flip it and you change it to the uh, corresponding class, um, which would be non R and non S. So here, all S are R. If we do the contrapositive, it would be all non R, R, non S. And then the other part remains the same. All, so here we have non-R and non-R. So our, our middle term now is non-R. We have our major term, non-S, matches non-S. And then our minor term, C, matches C. Okay, so now we have this in the proper form. Uh, or in the minimized form, reducing the number of terms. Now we need to test uh, uh, using the rules to ensure that uh, this is valid or invalid. We want to see if this is an invalid or valid argument. OK, so the rules. First rule, the middle term must be distributed. OK, so our middle term is non-R. So remember, in an A-form statement, all non-R are non-S. The subject class is um, distributed. So the middle term is distributed. It's distributed here in the first premise. Second rule, any term distributed in the conclusion must be distributed in the premise where it occurs. Um, since this is an I-form statement, some C are non-S. Uh, neither term is distributed, so it passes that second rule. Third rule, no valid syllogisms have two negative premises. Um, this uh, A-form and I-form statements are both positive, so it passes that rule. And uh, rule four, if the conclusion is negative, there must be one negative premise. Conclusion is not negative. Um, and th thus, there doesn't need to be one negative premise. And so this argument is actually valid. OK, that's a lot of stuff to handle. Uh, but the good part about this is if you've been traveling through this class and doing your work, you probably understand a lot of this and this is kind of the culmination of you know 10 weeks of work so kudos to you if you get it and if you don't get it uh, if you don't understand it it's that you don't understand it yet and you will as we continue to work these problems um, so let's continue with uh, another problem we'll uh, look at number three here uh, about the Peace Corps next Okay, the next one. Um, all Peace Corps volunteers are people who have witnessed poverty and desolation. So starting out with a really positive one here. Um, so all Peace Corps volunteers are people who have experienced desolation. We won't use P again. We can't use P again. Um, and so even though it says uh, poverty and desolation, let's use the desolation term to keep them separate. So P here is Peace Corps volunteers. All right. Uh, and all people sensitive, insensitive to human need are people who have failed to witness poverty and desolation. So all non-sensitive people are non-people who have witnessed poverty and desolation. Thus, conclusion indicator, so we know that this is the actual conclusion, all, all Peace Corps volunteers are people sensitive, who are sensitive. All Peace Corps people are sensitive people. Okay, so we've symbolized it, step one. Step two, we gotta get our major term and minor term in the proper uh, location in the premises. So you can see here that uh, our major term is S and our minor term is P. So, we need the second premise listed here is actually our major premise. So we just move it, get things appropriately situated. All right, so P and P match, that's great. Um, uh, but the problem is that non S does not match S and D does not match non D. 
But if you'll remember from our last example, we know that in an A form statement, it's contrapositive is logically equivalent. And so here we change, you flip the subject and predicate and change to their class complements. So their class complements here would be non non D and non non S, which is the same as saying D and S. So all non S or non D is the same as saying all D R S. Then we have all P R D. Hence, all P R S. All right, now we need to use the rules method to test for validity. First rule, do you remember it? Middle term must be distributed at least once. In an A form statement, the subject is distributed, thus uh, the middle term is distributed here. Anything distributed in the conclusion must be distributed in its corresponding premise. So P is distributed because we, as we just said, the subject class is always distributed in an A form statement. So P is distributed as well uh, in this premise. So it passes rule two. Uh, rule three, no valid syllogisms have two negative premises. This is all AAA form. It's actually an AAA one form, which we should know automatically is a valid form, uh, but we do need to test it anyway. So it passes rule three. Uh, if the conclusion is negative, stop. The conclusion is not negative, so it passes rule four. So this is a valid syllogism from the unconditionally valid form from the Boolean perspective. All right, um, let's do another one. All right, let's look at number eight. <clears throat> All schools driven by careerism. All C meaning schools driven by careerism. All schools driven by careerism are institutions that do not emphasize liberal arts. We'll say are non L non liberalizers. All careerist schools are um, schools that do not or non liberalizers. It follows that, conclusion indicator, some universities are not institutions that emphasize liberal arts. Some U are not L. It follows that some U are not L. So that is actually our conclusion. It follows that some U are not L for the reason that for our premise indicator, some schools that are non-careerist are universities. Not driven by careerism is the same as non-careerist, so some non-careerist are universities. All right, all C are non-L, some non-C are U, some U are not L. Um, this is some you are not L, which is different from non L here. So some you are not L. L is our uh, is our uh, major term. So we have L in the proper place, but it's the class complement. So we need to figure out how to change that. Um, and then U is our minor term that matches here. Second premise, so the premises are correct. So we're safe there. Um, but now uh, we can see that U and U match each other. But our middle term doesn't match C and non-C, and our um, major term non-L and L do not match. So we need to figure out a way to change um, non-L to L or L to non-L, while also changing C to non-C or non-C to C. Um, and we'll just go back to the same to the other two that we did. We're allowed to use the contrapositive on. Um, on A form statements because A form statements are logically equivalent to their contrapositives. So non L becomes L. All L are non C. Some non C are U. Some U are not L. Okay, now we have L and L, non C and non C, and U and U. So our terms match, we've reduced the number of terms. Now we need to check the rules of validity to determine if this is a valid syllogism. Okay, so rule one, 
is that the middle term must be distributed at least once. So our middle term here is non-C. And we can see that uh, it's not distributed here because the predicate is not distributed in an A-form statement. It's also not distributed here because neither term is distributed in an I-form. So this fails rule one. So overall, we know it fails rule one. So this is an invalid form, first of the three that's been invalid. So the first two were valid, That's, this one's invalid. Oh, all right, so I hope that that's helped you uh, think about and uh, learn some about how to um, reduce the number of terms and then determine uh, validity using the rules method after doing so.